Hello and welcome to the Turn and Place tutorial for Move It. In this tutorial we will go over some settings, adding new turn animations. We will also be covering state-based changes, so for crouching or standing it can use different turn and place settings. And there will be a second tutorial where we use custom animations and you'll see how to generate those and add those to the system for yourself. So to get started if we open the animation blueprint you'll see the turn and place settings under class defaults. These first two settings we can ignore they'll be for the second tutorial. So we've got step sizes 16, 90, 135. We have a minimum turn angle that reflects our first turn. The maximum turn angle actually prevents us from using 135. So if I apply my turn, that's a 60 and that's a 90. Now if I change this to 135 and play, and I do a big step, you can see he used the 135 when he needed to. Now, if I want to, say, add a 30 degree turn, I need to change the minimum turn angle so he can turn at 30 degrees. I need to come here, insert, and add a 30 degree turn. So if I open the animation graph, go into his locomotion, base, base, stand, stand, movement, movement, idle, idle, and now we're in the state machine where the turn in place happens. So we'll start with the left turn. We want to right click on the blend poses node and go add blend pin. Change the blend time to zero. And using control and left click, just drag these all down one. Then using control W, we duplicate this node plug in the play rate and plug them into slot zero and then take the 30 degree turn left animation. Now if you aren't using the mannequin presumably you will need to retarget these animations first. So we come back out and we do the same thing for the right turn. So now if I compile and play, you see he has a tiny little 30 degree turn that he can do. And this is especially good for the twin stick template, which comes with this set up properly for you. Because it keeps them uh, oriented more accurately, which is generally what you want for that. So... The problem now arises that every state expects these step sizes in these settings. So before we solve that, we're just going to go through the other settings here. So we have mat turn rate at max turn angle. So that's currently 90. And that means even no matter what, his mesh will just spin to keep up even when he, if his turn animations are unable to do so. And we can set that to zero, by the way, to disable it. But, so if you're not making a shooter and it's an adventure game, it might make sense to do so. So that 135 is really doing its work to keep up. And if I took that out, you know, the 90 would be taking over. And if you're going to set it to zero, it might make sense to have 180 degree turns as well, or maybe more like 170 or something. Now, when we hit this max turn angle, the, the turn animation speeds up, so we can make it so it plays at a rate of three. And you'll see he really quickly plays his turn. And this is just so the animation tries to keep up 
for the fact that we've hit that clamp. So turn rate on direction change. So let's say I'm playing a turn left animation and during that animation I switch to where it needs to play a turn right animation. It will rapidly increase the animation rate to complete it so we can play the new animation that we want. Uh, start moving turn rate. That's pretty self-explanatory. If or maybe not so much. If I set this to say, well, 60, your slot doesn't turn so easily. When we start moving, there is no snap, it interpolates at this rate. If I just go 5, you will see it takes a very long time before he's facing the direction we're moving in. So if you play a root motion montage, maybe you're making a single player game or you're using the gameplay ability system, you can make it so it will reset to turn and place. So resetting is the same thing as when moving forward. If you're here, you start playing a montage, it will face forward at this given rate. So if you play an attack, it's going to very quickly face the camera and it just kind of handles it for you so you don't have to. Okay, so next we're going to handle staked changes. So let's make a struct, blueprints, structure, s underscore, uh, turn in place, settings. Let's add a float array of step sizes. And then we're just going to add two floats. And then turn angle. So all the settings you want to change for each state you would put here. Max turn angle. But these are the three most common, so that's what I'm going with. Okay, so that was actually a mistake. These are in integers, not floats. Okay, so back to the animation blueprint. And what we want to do is add a variable for each state. So we'll say stand, turn in place. We want to go turn in place settings. And let's duplicate this and say crouch, turn in place. So if I compile, save, we can add the settings that we want or standing here. So we'll have say 30 and one, 135 when he's standing. So 30, 60, 90, 135. And then for crouching, we'll just have the default of 60 and 90. Now crouch does have 60, 90, 135, but we're not going to use it. We can use what mode it used as default when crouching. Okay, so what we need now is events for when they start standing or when they start crouching. So we go to stand and go start standing. We can add start crouching and hit compile, or they won't show up. Come to the event graph, start standing, start crouching. So let's let's set a function. Set in place settings. And we're going to take one of these as an input. So we'll just change it to turn and play settings, which it already was. Call it settings. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. We go break. And we'll go set step sizes to this value. Plug that in. Go set and then turn angle to that value. 
Let's make this turn an angle. Okay, so in the event graph, when we go start set standing, we can just call set turn in place settings to stand turn in place. And we can do the same thing for the crouching. Just drag this over the node, make sure it's a tick mark and it doesn't have that equals. So if you do it on the edge, then it will change the node. Okay, so we go compile and save. So now if we play, we'll use the 30 when standing. If we crouch, he'll change, so he uses the 60 and the 90. Now we go to the 30. Now there is actually an issue. If we hit the max and then you crouch, um, you don't really see it actually. We are changing the max turn angle, which is a hard clamp. It's not interpolated. So what you would do in a production setting, and I suppose we can do this real quick, we'll say um, target max turn angle. Make that a float, and we'll set this instead of just changing the max turn angle. You might want to do it for the min turn angle. To be honest, I haven't experimented with that one. Haven't needed to. So we're no longer changing the max turn angle. We'll go update animation. We can take the target max turn angle. We can go get max turn angle. And does not equal. We're only going to bother if they differ in value. Just want to move this down a bit. We're going to go interp constant. So interp2 is a distance based interpolation and it will change based on frame rate. For cosmetic stuff like this, it might be okay, but I just do not like that node. He is not our friend in many circumstances. So we'll say 15, at least as a test. And then we'll just say set max turn angle. So this way we're interpolating the maximum turn angle. So if you are at max turn angle of 135 and it changes to 90, it's going to interpolate that hard clamp back down. It's going to be smooth. It's not going to snap out under any circumstance. So we should be able to just keep turning and changing states and it changes between our settings as expected. So that all works. That's how you add state-based turn-in-place settings. Okay, so that covers everything you need to know about working with the existing turn and play system and also adding state based turn and play settings. The next tutorial will focus on well, what if I have my own animation pack? How do I get that in there? All right, thank you for watching.